Has Constellation Brands finally gotten its mojo back? Regular viewers know that I'm a big believer in, in Constellation. That's the alcohol company best known for selling Corona, Modelo, and Pacifico here in the United States, along with some fancy wines and liquors. But lately, the stock has been a tough one to own as investors worry about a slowdown in the broader beer industry. There's one reason, I would say that's probably the main reason, Constellation shelled out about $4 billion for a 38% stake in canopy growth. The best of the Canadian cannabis place, if you ask me, in large part because it is the biggest war chest because Constellation gave it to them. I think that investment has a ton of potential as the marijuana business expands, but people are still worried about the core beer business. That's why the stock exploded higher today. Voting nearly 12 bucks. You know, it was down early because of the stupid algo guys. Or 6.5% in the wake of a terrific quarter. Yep, Constellation reported 12 cent earnings beat off $1.72 basis. Better than expected. Revenue up 2% year, year over year. Strong volume. Now, at first glance, the guidance seems soft, but once management clarified that those numbers don't include any earnings from canopy growth or from the $1.7 billion in low-end wine brands the company's selling, the stock was off to the races. Can it keep climbing? Let's check in with Bill Newlands. He's the brand-new CEO of Constellation Brands. Learn more about the quarter his company, where, it, where it's headed. Hey, Mr. Newlands, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Jim. Good to be here. Absolutely. Hey, Bill, uh, this number showed, uh, without a doubt, especially because he had bad weather, it didn't even matter, that not only is beer back, but your beers are taking up the whole growth in the total beverage environment. It is. Uh, the high end continues to be strong, and we are the leader in the high end. And you're right. The end of February wasn't great weather-wise, but our year overcame the whole thing. We were almost 9% growth in, in depletions in our beer business. It's just a juggernaut, and we're thrilled with it. Now, I want to ask you something. A lot of people felt that we were worried about all the debt you took down for a canopy. I was shocked. One, at first, that you got $1.7 billion for brands that really you guys have been saying aren't really generating the return. But second, your cash flow was incredible. You can pay down this four point seven in, in three years, the way I look at it. Well, as you know, we've said we plan to return $4.5 billion to investors over the next three years. And you're right. This is a cash-generating business. And now that we've excised a piece of our wine business, we think we're going to have great potential in that piece of our business as well. So we're excited about the future. I know you spoke at the Beverage Association. I've got my spies there the other day. And it looked like that what you're saying is what really matters is the high end is great. Hence, why you would keep a prisoner, why you bought High West, why you're up uh, premiumizing the, the uh, premiumization of, of tequila. These all have come into play. They're working, aren't they? They are. They're all powerhouse brands. They're consumer interesting. They're high margin businesses. And we think this is where the growth in the future is going to come from. So this is where we wanted to be in the future. And this deal today puts us in place to do just that. You have a close relationship with Mexico. It's been a fabulous one. Were you worried today when the president's talking about shutting down Mexican trade if things don't go right? Well, I got to tell you, I'm happy to hear that he's backing off that whole argument because obviously we make all of our beer in Mexico. But, you know, there's lots of things that we could do to mitigate that issue, but we'd prefer not to deal with it at all, to be honest with you. Yeah, I remember when some people were saying you, you could make, what do they want you to do, make Mexican beer in Michigan? But that's never going to happen, is it? Yeah, that's, no, that, that's not going to work. All right. Now, I want to talk to you about Canopy. Uh, there are some expectations built in here that, uh, that I thought were pretty aggressive. Um, Bill Coyle says here, he says, Bill called out the Canopy business will be generating over $1 billion in run rate, net sales at the end of the upcoming fiscal year. Can they really do that kind of revenue? I certainly think it can, Jim. I, if you look at Canada alone, Canada is on a run rate of 5 to $6 billion in sales. And Canopy is the leading player in that market. So if you just think about uh, Canada alone, you're going to have a great opportunity. Then you add in new form factors later this year and things like beverage and other edibles. Um, we, think, we think the sky's the limit. This is going to be a big business. And how Canopy's you... going to be the leader. But Bill, I'm worried. I, how are you going to manage your time with you got CBD, you got to get the THC, you got to get the beverage done, you got to do the high end spirits, and you also got to do beer. Isn't this too much for one guy? Well, obviously, I don't do it all by any stretch of the imagination, but, um, you know, we're very focused. Canopy's focused on what they're going to do to build the right form factors and the right markets uh, to win across the globe as necessary and as it becomes legal. We've got a very strong team in beer, and we've got a very strong team in wine. We think we're in pretty good position to win on all three of those fronts. 
Now, do you think that one of the reasons why low-end wine isn't doing as well as, or, or people fear it won't do as well is because Canopy comes in, let's say, with a very good-tasting drink, which has no calories. They're dominant because they got the most money. Isn't that an attractive opportunity for people, I'm going to use the term that you and I use off-camera, to get a buzz in a better way? Well, you know, we, that, this is part of the reason why we focused our attention on the trade-up sector in the wine business. That's going to continue to be the growth profile for wine going forward, in our judgment. Same is true in spirits. And whether or not uh, a, a cannabis piece ends up taking a chunk of some part of the business, we see no evidence of that today, as I've told you before. Right. But, you know, at some point in time, it could very well happen. We believe we're positioned to win on all of those fronts, no matter what the uh, consumer chooses to do. Okay, you know, you know, I got Bar San Miguel. Now, of course, that's obviously anecdotal. But the millennials are in love with with the Modelo on tap. Okay, the Especial, and Big they time. can't get enough Pacifico. Did you guys just pivot right? Is that luck? What happened there? You know, that's what the millennials are drinking. It's those two beers. Well, this past year is the first year we really did national advertising for Pacifico. And we've got double-digit growth outside the core home market of California. So Pacifico is an up-and-coming brand for us. As you know, it's hot, and it's hot with a younger consumer. So we're really excited about it. And then you think about the success of Premier that we had this year. It focuses in on that health-conscious, low-carb, low-cal. It did almost twice what we expected to, it to do in fiscal 19. And we think it's got a great growth profile coming up in this year, too. Tough to keep in stock. That's what they say. Tough to keep in stock. That is that's, Bill Newland's president. That's a nice of, problem. All right, he's president and CEO of Constellation Brands. I like this company. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.